Okay, we've touched on this before, but I'm gonna show you the benefits of using auto ISO when you're using shutter priority mode. Now I use this quite a lot of weddings. Now let's say I'm outside at a function, I know this is just the garden, but imagine I'm at a function at a wedding and I'm set to 125th of a second because I want to be able to capture action, um, whatever's going on. I don't want the shutter speed to be any lower than 125th or 100th of a second. So I, I know that I'll get sharp images. Now if I'm set to shutter priority and I'm just on 100 ISO um, fixed, not auto, then yeah, but let's have a look what happens when I go from a relatively bright area to a dark area. Now I'm looking through here and I'm getting 125th at f5.6 and 100 ISO. So I could be shooting outside, no problem, taking photos, but as soon as I move into the dark, I've got 125th at 100 ISO, but the f2.8 is now flashing. That means the ISO, sorry, the aperture can't go any wider. And if I take a shot, it's gonna be well underexposed. Now let's switch on auto ISO and see what happens now with the same situation. So I'm outside taking a shot, and again, I'm getting 125th at f5.6 on 100 ISO. I'm moving around and the aperture's open right up to f3.2. I'm still on 125th of a second, but I'm now on f3.2, but the auto ISO has gone up to 500. So it's kind of saved my bacon. If I didn't have that on, I would be getting shots that are well underexposed and it wouldn't be able to get the photo. With auto ISO on, as I move into a darker area, the shutter speed stays the same, the aperture opens up to pretty much as wide as it will go, but the ISO will increase to compensate for that lack of light. So it's a fantastic thing to have. Now there's one other thing that you can add to that. If we go into the menu system, into the custom functions, and a lot of cameras now have this, it's, got, it's called safety shift. And if you enable that within the camera, what will happen then is, if you're panning around and there is not enough light, the camera will override shutter priority so it'll take me from 125th of a second down to pretty much whatever value of the lens is so if i'm using a 50 millimeter lens it will bring it down to about 50th maximum shutter speed or minimum shutter speed so let's try that again now i'm coming around 125th of a second f5 f5 and it's now 125th 3.2 at 500 again because i'm still on auto iso so now if I switch off auto ISO and go back to 100 ISO, let's see what happens now. 125th at 5.6, 125th 5.6. And as I've gone into the dark now, I'm actually on a 40th of a second f2.8, 100 ISO, and I can still take a shot. And my camera is on 35 millimeter setting on a zoom lens. It's the 24 to 70 uh, lens and I'm on about 40 millimeters there, and it gave me about a 40th of a second shutter speed, so it knows it's within a safety zone. If I open that right out to a 24 millimeter lens now, 125th f5.6, and as I go around to there, it's knocked me down to a 25th of a second f2.8, so it's still within that safety zone of the 24 millimeter lens. Let's try the other end at a 70th of a 70 millimeter. I've got 125th f5.6, Remember the ISO is still 100, 125th, and it's now gone down to a 15th of a second at f2.8. So it's too dark to be able to get anything fast enough for me to capture there. So the safety shift does work in some respects down to a certain speed, but then after that you're gonna be struggling. So the benefits of cameras these days of DSLRs are that you can have auto ISO switched on, which is fantastic, especially with the quality of ISOs, at high ISOs these days. Um, it's great to use that feature if you've got it, so it saves you from having to get um, you know, a wider aperture when you haven't got a wider aperture and you're gonna get a slow shutter speed and camera shake. Auto ISO will help you to stay within the limits of camera holdability um, without getting camera shake. The safety shift is just another aspect where it will override either the aperture priority or the shutter priority. So have a play with those two and just see how far you can push them and see what the limitations are of when you're working. Um, but the main one to use is auto ISO. If you've got a camera that has auto ISO, have a practice with that and see how you get on.